Ladies and gentlemen, Brian Zane here. I am at the Sheraton in New Orleans for WrestleCon 2018, and I'm joined by someone who I was surprised to find is a fan of the show, the one-man gang, Akeem, call him what you will, but he's here today. Uh, sir, how you doing? I'm doing well, Mr. Regret. <laughs> I'm doing really well down here in New Orleans at the uh, WrestleCon having a great time meeting and greeting fans. You was a few tables down, so I'll come over to say hello and tell you how much I enjoy your show. I appreciate that a lot. And it must be an easy commute for you because you say you live in Baton Rouge, so only about an hour here? One of uh, 70 miles, give or take a few miles. But, yeah, was, this time it was easy. Sometimes it's not quite that easy, but this one was. Yeah. So now, I'm, like I said, I'm very surprised that you are a fan of the show. Um, also, a lot of it has to do with the fact that, you know, I have talked about a lot of your, your gimmicks and a lot of the matches that, that you know, are could be, you, you could say are regrettable or regretful. <laughs> Now, I know you've, you've probably talked about this a lot, but the transition from One Man Gang to Akeem has always fascinated me. So can you talk to me about how that happened and how you felt about it? Well, you know, of course how it happened was uh, the, the main head figure of WWF at that time. He comes up with this great idea and, you know, slicks my manager. So he says, you know, well, I need a, char a colorful new character. So... They sit down and what can we do? Well, well, what if we made one man gang and we come up with this thing where we found his roots and we found out his roots were, you know, African from Africa, you know? So like all the other gimmicks, he said, well, we, that's what we'll do. And uh, I, w people say, well, why did you do it? Well, the thing is, I didn't have a choice to be honest about it, you know? There's a rumor that the voice, the affectation, the mannerisms was based on Dusty Rhodes. Can you attest to that? Well, I mean, it was, I wasn't told to, to be like Dusty Rhodes. If I was doing it like Dusty Rhodes, it was complimentary. You know, but I was, I was, yeah, exactly. But people say, well, was it a rib all, you know, uh, against Dusty Rhodes? And I tell them, well, Dusty came into the company. Why? How? How's that a rib if they bring him into the company and they put him in polka dots? So it wasn't a. You know, it was never once told to me. You know, well, we want you to be like Dusty Rhodes. That was just me. You know. All right. Well, let's jump. Let's jump ahead to some of the matches that you've been involved with that I've talked about on my channel in either reviews, like the, the, the retro reviews, or like specific show reviews. Let's start with Great American Bash 91, where you wrestled El Gigante. Right. Now I say, you know, you made the best of what you could because El Gigante is kind of immobile, but right, I'm, right, I was, right. I'm still impressed this day, the bump you took off the top rope. But talk to me about that match of working with El Gigante. It's, uh, you know, it's just, you know, El, 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 G, El Gigante was a super nice person, you know, privately you know in the dressing rooms or away from the arena but you know nothing i'm not saying anything bad about a person who's passed away but ring wise he just wasn't made for a wrestling ring he just didn't have any coordination he had no cardiovascular at all in, in three minutes he was sucking wind like a choo-choo train and he just it was just very very hard I, I you know i did the best i could do basically you know but that's all we could do because he wasn't very versatile. Nice guy, but not ring-wise. So the next match I want to talk to you about, Akeem, Mr. One Man Gang, is your match with Abdul the Butcher at Heroes of Wrestling at the Casino Magic. Yeah, yeah. That's, <laughs> a, that's another famous match. <laughs> well, you get out. First off, the whole pay-per-view is famous, you know, for the worst ever. <laughs> yes, it's, it's famous for all the wrong reasons. All now, the, that yeah. match was a bloodbath. Yeah. Um, my biggest question is, in later years, we've come to learn that Abdul the Butcher has hepatitis uh, C uh, exactly. and everything. And so you guys, I mean, I have to ask you, uh, so were you nervous when you heard that? I didn't know that. Yeah. You know, uh, I mean, I'd, I'd worked against the man in Puerto Rico and places, you know, and we, I mean, when you go in the ring against Abdullah the Butcher, you pretty much know it's going to be bloody. But I'd never once heard that he had any disease or anything, you know. I was never told that. Did you get checked out after the fact? Or? Uh, well, you know, after I heard that, yeah, I got checked out. Luckily for me, I didn't contract anything, you know. But uh, the promoter for that show got like extremely mad they told us you know they said it's okay you do what you got to do bleed you know get juice whatever but he thought well i thought you was just gonna get a little bit just a little bit yeah no. you know it was a lot more than a little bit that night Abdullah, what do you expect <laughs> you know and he was like he went 
ballistic, you know, said, what the heck are you doing, you know? Uh, What's well, Abdullah the Butcher? What do you think is going to happen? You know, he's got a fork sticking in my head. Right. And then the match, you know, this this bloody no holds barred match for it to end in like a no contest. Do you, exactly. do you, were you privy well, to that happening? See, originally, uh, the the promoter, whoever was booking the show, wanted Abdullah to go over with the big elbow, Abdullah elbow, and Abdullah said, "No, I don't want to go over on one man gang. It's not right." So Abdullah said, we'll just fight to a double count out or whatever, which is super nice on his part. He don't have to do that. And I would have put him over with no trouble. I didn't have no trouble with it. So that was nice on his part. But, yeah, like you said, it was just a free-for-all fight. But that's all it's ever going to be with him, you know, anywhere. And, you know, for a man his age and stuff, he still, to get in there is just amazing to me anyway. So... Let's talk now about the the Gimmick Battle Royal from WrestleMania 17, which I just covered on the channel. Uh, you know, you were part of the Gimmick Battle Royal as one man gang. You told me yesterday before we started recording this right, that apparently right. they had other plans for you. So tell me about that. Right, right. Well, originally when I, I just came off a little USO tour, and uh, uh, Howard Finkel called me at home and asked if I could do the Gimmick Battle Royal, but Vince wanted me as Akeem. And I told Howard, I said, Howard, man, the outfit this is back when I'd lost down to 300 pounds. The outfit was, me was measured at over 400, you know. So the outfit's not going to, of course, it's not going to fit. It's all baggy. I told Howard, it just don't fit, Howard. I can't do I came. And uh, he said, well, you know, I'll ask Vince, you know, we'll see. I'll call you back tomorrow or whatever. So the next day he calls back and says, oh, Vince said it's okay. You can come in as a one-man gang and. That's basically was it. I came in as a one-man gang, and, you know, the actual match was only supposed to last about three minutes, you know, real short. A lot of guys in that match. You can see, hey, I mean, as soon as the bell rang, guys were flying over the top. So, And even then, we went long. It went like five, and they was all crazy in the back, you know. Get out of there. Get out of the ring. So, you know, yeah, it was nice, you know. That was the last time I've done anything for them uh, for them guys. Was, was the Iron Sheep picked to win because he couldn't go over the top rope? No, nah, maybe I'm not sure. I just think you know the maybe it's just picked because he was the Iron Sheik and he's kind of a what it like a you know online I don't know everybody's well, the, the, the the online sensation didn't happen until years later. But no, I get what you're saying. I think you know you could say that you know uh, you know you know it was it was a nice feel good moment for Slaughter to get his heat back afterward. Right, but I always right. thought it was I was assumed because he was so immobile he just couldn't yeah, get it over. It was very possible. You know, like I say, I'm not privy to. What's going on behind the scenes like that? I just knew my spot to go out, and that was, the, that was it, you know? I mean, yeah. Now, final question. I know you worked in World Class for a, a long time. I, um, I recently came upon a copy of the World Class Championship Wrestling Von Erich board game, and uh, yes. you're in that. You're, you're featured as one I of the players. In. Did you get any royalties for that game? I did not. No? <laughs> I, I had a copy of the game myself, but it got washed away in the flood, and... I took it out and I'm like, I, how the heck do you play this thing? I, I st you know, I could never figure it out. Uh, that, that that does not bode well for me because I, I can see it's a cribbage board. I saw that, Something but then there's like, like some that. game pieces. Okay, so if you couldn't play it, then I don't know if I'll be able to get any luck with it either. But, uh, no, I didn't see one cent from that. I didn't even know it was out till years later when I, you know, and somebody said, hey, have you ever seen this? And you know, and then somebody sent me one in the mail. I'm like, wow. what the heck is this? I had no idea. <laughs> Kind of a surprise for you. Well, thank you so much for taking time for this interview. Well, I really appreciate it. Grant, you people are watching wrestling, wrestling with with regret. <laughs> I should go by Mr. Regret from now on. That sounds like a catchy nickname. Forget the influence. I'm Mr. Regret from now on. For the one-man gang, I'm Brian Zane, and I'll see you next time. And Mr. Regret signing off. <laughs>